Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5. Except today it's a special edition. We're doing the Prime 10, the 10 biggest stories in the last 24 hours because we missed an episode yesterday. I wasn't feeling well. You guys don't care about that crap, right? You're here for the news. So without further ado, we're going to attempt to get 10 stories in 10 minutes. Let's get into the news. And our first story is a Famitsu sales chart update. We're just going to focus on a couple aspects, although you'll see all the numbers on screen. First up, Splatoon 3 sold 1,934,680 units at launch. Now, we know that this is only physical sales because that's all Famitsu can track for Nintendo. We do know Nintendo announced officially in Japan it sold 3.45 million overall. So that means about 1.5 million sales were digital only. Also, the Switch itself sold 182,846 thousand units and 148,000 of those were the Switch. OLED Nintendo Switch made up 98% of all hardware sales last week. Really, really crazy. And you know what? Let's get into our next story. Nintendo did a surprise update to NSO yesterday. They released more games for Sega Genesis. This includes Elisa Dragoon, Beyond Oasis. However, in Europe, it's titled The Story of Thor, A Successor of Light, and Earthworm Jim. These are obviously three classic titles that I'm super excited to see come back. And, well, that actually leads really nice to our next story. Because we want more games to come back, right? Including the Yakuza series that we got on Wii U. But it's been missing on Switch, even though it could easily run on Switch. Why is that? Well, according to executive producer Ruga Gotuka, there's actually a really dumb reason it's not on Switch. Do we want to put a title like this where we're going around and picking a fight with the world and doing all this Yakuza stuff on a Switch? And Yokoyama explained, and according to this producer, the family-friendly image of the Switch in its home ground of Japan clashes with the underground feeling that Yakuza games project. We still kind of think of ourselves as people of the night world, right? We don't want to be like walking around the day with everybody else, Yokoyama said. Like for us, it's kind of showing this kind of underground feeling. I think the underground kind of feeling is what we want to do. Now, the reason that caring about Nintendo's family-friendly image in Japan is a pretty asinine statement is one, Nintendo is self-publishing an M-rated game in Bayonetta 3 in Japan, and Doom and Doom Eternal, also M-rated games, have released from third-party companies in Japan. In fact, Switch is the home of many M-rated games, and if we want to talk about walking around near the daylight. I know it's a cultural thing, but there's a lot of dating sims showing skin in Japan on Switch. There really doesn't seem to be a legit reason to not bring Yakuza to Switch. We all know it just didn't sell well on Wii U, and that's probably the real reason, because the same reputation for Switch existed for Wii U then. Next up, we have to talk about a bug for Splatoon 3. Now, they did do a recent update of 1.1, but it didn't address this issue, and that is an invisible ink problem you're seeing right now. Now, this bug isn't known how it exactly triggers. Some people thought it was really the ping or latency, but... It's really where you're shooting your gun and it doesn't ink the ground. Even though your sub weapon does ink the ground, characters are moving around you and when you reboot the game, the problem goes away. So is it a latency issue? Is it a connection problem? Or is there just a legit bug that every now and then triggers and for some reason your main weapon is useless? I have no idea. Sucks that it happens, but hopefully it'll be patched out in the future. Now we get to talk to about some fun stats about the Direct, the State of Play, the Ubisoft Forward, Disney's event, because this is really neat that these stats exist. So the Nintendo Direct peaked at 2.1 million viewers with an average of 1.4 million. It was streamed on over 200 channels, so by far the most streamed of all of the events. Comparatively, the State of Play peaked at just over 1 million viewers and averaged around 780,000 viewers, or... To look at another way, about half of what Nintendo did, about 50% of those views also happened on Twitch. Ubisoft Forward peaked at 600,000 viewers and averaged around 500,000. Disney and Marvel Showcase peaked at 166,000 and averaged around 107,000. Naturally, platform holders hold the largest audiences, and whether you love or hate the latest Nintendo Direct, it is undeniable the marketing they pull off. On Nintendo's YouTube channel alone, the Nintendo Direct has 4.5 million views compared to just 1.4 million for the state of play. Of course, this has nothing to do with major games. The Zelda trailer for Tears of the Kingdom alone has 4.1 million views right now, and God of War Ragnarok's trailer from Sony has 4.2 million. So while not everyone tunes in, 
during Sony's live show as much as Nintendo's, the biggest games still do numbers after the show ends. Next up, we have a huge sale on the Nintendo Switch eShop, up to 70% off. So right now, Wolfenstein 2 is one of those 70% off, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. You can now get the game for $11.99 during the sale. Another really good sale I wanted to point out was Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, because I think this game is utterly fantastic. It's 30% off on the eShop right now, down to $41.99. There's a whole list of games, a whole bunch of stuff to go through. We could literally spend an hour going through all the sales data. You guys can go check it out yourself. I'll put a link down in the description. Next up, a classic RPG franchise is coming back from the 1990s, and we're talking about Sukadem 1 Plus 2 HD Remaster. It actually got announced at Tokyo Game Show, and yes, will be coming over to the United States. It's coming to all platforms, including Switch, and is an RPG series that started all the way back in 1995 and actually just hasn't been around for some time. So I'm really glad to see this series come back. It looks pretty good. They're not doing anything crazy with this HD of it, but it is something that at least brings part of my childhood back. Today, Disney Dreamlight Valley announced that they have over 1 million players. Really, really interesting for this game. So while it is on Switch, the only way to play it is if you buy the Founder Pack. It's $29.99 for that Founder Pack. Now, I know some of our audience have been playing it and loving this game. If you want, kind of want to know what it is, it's sort of a life sim game. Think of it like an Animal Crossing, but Disney edition. However, that's not exactly fair because there's features in this, not in Animal Crossing. Features in Animal Crossing, not in this. Overall, it's had a really positive reception from players. I do find the running animations to be a little funny, but hey, besides that, I guess the game is pretty good. Next up, we get to talk about Monster Hunter Rise because it had a new content drop during Tokyo Game Show that's coming out on September 29th, and this is actually a free update. So there's going to be a new monster called Violet Mitsusun and another new monster called Risen Camellios and an unlockable layered weapons are also featured. There's going to be new weekly quest events. If you own the paid DLC, you will also get additional smaller things for that paid DLC. There's going to be new monsters as well added to anomaly quest and the anomaly research level has been increased to 120. These are all really great additions to Monster Hunter Rise, but let's get into our next story. Our last story deals with Metroid Prime 4 because there was a weird update on Amazon made by Nintendo for some reason and it happened the same day as the Direct. Now, I found this stuff courtesy of Mike Odyssey and essentially they have added a digital pre-order to it. It's strange because even Tears of the Kingdom does not have the ability to digitally pre-order through Amazon, but for some reason, Metroid Prime 4 had it added the same day as the Direct, even though we didn't even get any Metroid news. I find that just to be really strange. Nintendo does control their own listing on Amazon. I, I don't really know if this means anything or if this means it's getting announced or shown or something. Uh, maybe Nintendo's experimenting with digital pre-orders through other uh, you know other outlets online. Usually digital pre-orders they take personally through the eShop and then you can buy a digital code after launch at Best Buy or wherever your preferred retailer is. But hey, this is something that happened. Now, another thing I want to address, and this is related to our good pal, Mike Odyssey. For those who don't know, he is also the co-host of the Nintendo Prime podcast, and he's a small upcoming YouTuber that I love to support. He's doing crazy things. He has an amazing podcast coming up here on September 24th, featuring the voice of Noah from Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That's right. The actual voice actor is going to be on his podcast. Pretty crazy, the things he's doing over there for such a small channel. He's been the target of harassment lately. There's a particular user that is copyright claiming and reporting all of Mike Odyssey's videos. Now, he has actually been disputing all of this and winning every single dispute, but YouTube doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. And this person is well known among other Nintendo-based YouTubers to be a bit of a troll. And the problem in this particular case that makes us different than anyone else is that the reason that Mike Odyssey is being targeted is apparently because he is Puerto Rican and obviously the color of his skin, which is not something I ever want to hear as the reason to target a particular YouTuber and make their life hell. When videos get reported, it literally kills viewership. Half of the views he normally does, his momentum has been com almost completely stopped entirely on YouTube. I want to encourage my audience to maybe Go check out his channel. Go check out his videos. Uh, if you already follow him, maybe just share his content around on social media and, and try to get the algorithm to maybe pick him back up a little bit. Mike Odyssey has been a huge inspiration for this Prime 5 series that we do. So if you've been really enjoying these videos, he does deserve some credit for some conversations we had around creating this series. Heck, the Prime 5 name itself, he came up with that name. So 
Yeah, needless to say, he's a really good friend of the channel, and I'm sorry this is happening to you, buddy. Uh, I have sourced you directly from Metroid Prime 4 below if you guys want to maybe at least go check out that video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, and we'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.